Hilary Mance has written uh, a, a wonderful article in the Financial Times, and then I'm going to go to bed, but um, <laughs> about the Conservative leadership contest, uh, or, or, or maybe we should call it Britain's Got Mediocrity. Uh, what a strange spectacle it is turning out to be, and it deserves a fairly, <laughs> fairly disapproving articles in the national press to sum it up. Once again, we find ourselves in the grip of a leadership race that is both as riveting as a damp squib and as inevitable as a delayed train in Manchester or Euston, uh, or where, frankly, wherever you happen to be in the UK. Uh, <laughs> this week's surprise guest appearance is none other than the Conservative Party, which we had collectively filed away in the back of the national subconscious along with the dial-up internet and Ed Miliband. Now, Robert Jenrick. Because every leadership contest needs someone with the charisma of a beige curtain. I met a, a charming man in the train from Manchester today who was literally wearing um, beige. Uh, everything from his jacket down to his socks was beige and, and his shoes were beige. I, I, I thought it was very well equipped, but um, he, he sort of, he, if, if, he, if he wanted to surrender his sartorial um, uh, selection to any politician, it should be to Robert Jenrick, um, who not only is beige, but also is the equivalent of the pub bore who insists he's right about everything, while also getting all his facts wrong. He doesn't do any research, and yet at the same point, he likes to mouth off, and dully. His claims about being a man of the people are about as plausible as his ties to the metals industry. It's true, if you count the brass neck he's been sporting throughout this race. I, it, uh, the, the Conservative conference was bursting with verbs beginning with re, renew, rebuild, re-whatever, uh, though, though, though it seems not remember. The Conservatives appear to have developed a convenient amnesia about their role in the state of the wrecking ball of the country, as though the past 14 years were someone else's responsibility, not theirs. But fear not, Robert Jenrick is here to remind us all that it's Labour who should be blamed for not having solved the problems that they haven't even fully inherited yet. And then there's Kemi Badenoch, the Iron Lady-in-waiting, who claims never to have gaffes, though curiously she's made more gaffes than a debutante at her first ball, criticising maternity pay, suggesting 50,000 civil servants should be imprisoned. Well, that's one way to reduce the civil service backlog, take them out of the Home Office and replace them. Badenoch is an enigma wrapped in a paradox, buried under a pile of slightly concerning policy ideas. But no, she never makes mistakes. She just casually rewrites social norms and tears pages out of her diary, I presume, and, 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 and to, um, to, to erase the fact that they ever occurred. Well, what she does with those pages, I cannot imagine. Wipe and go. James Cleverly, the steady-as-she-goes candidate, is back on the scene with the appeal of sensible choice. Sensible? Only because he's the only one who isn't completely absurd. Well, there's Tom Tugan hat as well, I suppose. He, he's, he's, he's only... He, he's summed up by, by, by the inappropriate m jokes that he's made. Uh, the, the, the one about Rehypnol. Nothing to see here. He's the guy at the party who says, let's be normal. But the party's already halfway through a bottle of tequila and someone started juggling fire. And he's mistimed the moment somewhat as the Conservatives don't want to be normal. They want nostalgia. They want the 1950s. They want to return to three-channel television. What's so British about this contest is the refusal to admit that Brexit might have been a bit of a mistake. So that the climate crisis is not something you can wave a flag at and hope it goes away. Instead, we're fed a steady diet of lower taxes while pretending that the public purse isn't in need of some serious TLC. The final point is perhaps the most delightful in its absurdity, the prospect that under the next leader, the Conservatives might veer towards Nigel Farage's policies or, 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 or try and squeeze him into their trousers because nothing says forward-thinking governance than a pint of beer and a Brexit bulge. To 
quote Orwell, um, reaching the dogs might be inevitable, but for the Conservatives, the dogs have arrived. And the barking in the leadership contest is more than a whimper. It's a sign of animals straining at the leash, tugging on the, on, on, on the metal choke chain. Whether we end up with another Johnson-esque charlatan or a sensible, albeit deluded, choice, one thing is certain. The Conservatives know how to make politics a spectator sport. The only thing they seem to be able to do that commands interest is change their leader. Changing the Conservative leader is like changing a soiled nappy. But, you know, even if you do it, long enough, even if you practice and practice and practice, it's still soiled goods, isn't it? And for those of us watching from the sidelines with a cup of tea and a raised eyebrow, there's still a, sink, a stink, there's still a stink in the air.